was a French-Canadian fur trader and one of Chicago's first settlers. In the 1790s, he lived near Fort Dearborn at the mouth of the Chicago River with his wife, Archange Chevalier, who was Potawatomi on her mother's side. Sources differ on why the government gave Mrs. Wilmette all that land on the North Shore. According to one source, it was in gratitude to the couple for sheltering two survivors of the Fort Dearborn Massacre in 1812. The land became known as the Wilmette Reservation. They weren't very happy here. They had some trouble with the neighbors. Antoine sued one of them for trespassing and lost. Most of all, they missed their Native American relatives who had been forced to move west of the Mississippi after the Treaty of 1833. Before long, they moved west to join them. When the railroad came through in the 1850s, there was no stop in Wilmette, so it remained a farm town, at one point calling itself the pickle capital of the world. Local developers were so eager to subdivide the farmland for homes that they built a train station with their own hands. They chose Waukegan Judge Henry Blodgett as a partner because he was an advisor to the railroad, and they hoped he could use his influence to convince the train line to stop there. Blodgett named the town using a phonetic spelling. The first home buyers found a fledgling suburb with dirt roads and no street lights. Commuters left oil lanterns at the depot each morning so that when they returned at night they could find their way home. But by the 1890s, Wilmette was well on its way to becoming an upper middle class North Shore suburb. The western part of today's Wilmette was actually a separate village called Gross Point. It was the commercial center of the German farming community we talked about earlier. Gross Point supported itself with tax revenues from its 15 taverns. Prohibition closed them down, and in 1919 the town voted to dissolve and the village hall was sold to pay off debts. The village hall is still standing. It's now the Wilmette Historical Museum. As Chicago and its suburbs boomed in the 19th century, the soggy terrain went from being a nuisance to being a major health hazard. Sewage intermingled with drinking water and outbreaks of disease were commonplace. The Chicago Sanitary District was created for no less a purpose than to drain the whole region. In 1900, they built a huge canal that reversed the flow of the Chicago River. Then, in 1908, they began digging the North Shore Channel, which went right through Wilmette. The town made the best of it, though. The mouth of the channel became a beautiful lakefront harbor, and soil from the construction was used as landfill to create Gilson Park, home of the Wallace Bowl. The 2,000-seat amphitheater was built in 1946 as a WPA project. Today, it's a popular summer spot for community theater plays and concerts. Overlooking the harbor is one of the North Shore's most famous landmarks, the Baha'i House of Worship. The Baha'i Faith was introduced to Chicago at the World's Columbian Exposition of 1893. The founder of the faith was a Persian prophet named Baha'u'llah. He preached the oneness of the world's religions and people. Symbols of many world religions can be found in the lavish ornament. The building was designed by Louis Bourgeois in 1909. Construction started in 1920, but the building wasn't finished until 1953. The nine entrances and circular floor plan are part of Baha'i religious symbolism. Inside, the lacy dome soars nearly 200 feet overhead. Actor and comedian Bill Murray was raised in Wilmette. He had seven siblings. He acted in high school plays at Loyola Academy and helped pay his tuition there by working as a caddy at local country clubs. He honed his comic skills at Chicago's legendary Second City. Linden Street in Wilmette is the end of the line for Chicago's L trains. The old prairie-style station has been restored and is now a bank branch. In days gone by, the North Shore line continued west from here as a streetcar, eventually reaching the Chicago and Northwestern tracks where it headed north to Milwaukee. The last surviving fragment of the North Shore line